You know, it, it may not seem like the right time for a party right now, but God is inviting you and me, and even the people that we would not want to be at a party with, God is inviting, inviting everyone to come to a wonderful celebration, and God is not going to take any excuses. The dinner's prepared, everything is ready. You've received the call. You have been formally invited. So just drop everything and come. There's an urgency to this invitation. And today, today, you, bless you, you have made being with God and the Son your priority. Many Many are called. Few are chosen. And you are among the chosen ones. God promises a feast of rich food, well-aged wines, but more exceptional than the food. God promises that, that that shroud, that covering of fear and sadness and death and disgrace that have been heavily covering over us and the nation will be destroyed. God will exchange that covering with a robe of righteousness and celebration we don't want to be the one who rejects that gift because it comes with even more blessing. The Lord will wipe away the tears of all of our faces and take away the shame. We who have been waiting for God, waiting during this time, we will rejoice. This is a prophecy, meaning that it, it hasn't fully happened yet, but it is a promise that we can lean into when we are worried about so many things. When you're feeling overwhelmed, I encourage you to do what I understand athletes do. They visualize what they're going to be doing. They visualize the steps. They visualize the ending. I encourage you to do that, to visualize this feast, this celebration, this healing, what it will be like to be with God, trusting that this is a real promise. It will be true. And have confidence to live even in this time knowing that your good shepherd is near and will guide you to face the worries, to face the challenges, because you won't ever be going through this alone. One of the most important things I believe to do right now is to pray. To pray for your families, to pray for your church, your community, our nation, our world. To pray that the worries and the fears the sadness will be covered in the presence of the one who loves you and who makes all of his promises true. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul continues that word of encouragement. And I, I would suggest you memorize these verses too because they're so helpful. The Lord is near you. Don't worry about anything, but in prayer, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And God's peace, God's peace, will guard your heart. Oh, there are so many things vying for your attention right now, most of them negative. Focus instead intentionally focus on what is true what is honorable what is pure what is right what is just what is praiseworthy focus on those things and keep on doing the things that you've learned from god having that that mind of christ in you and that's how we go through the valley of the shadows and how we know 
can feel that peace of God with us. One of my favorite authors, Walter Wangren, wrote a book, um, Ragman. He wrote this years ago, but it's, it's really a good book with a lot of good stories, so I commend it to you. Um, he wrote a story about Ragman, and it takes place in a, in a little town um, when a, this strange person appeared in town, and he was pulling a wagon behind him, and there was clothing and stuff that was piled on this wagon, and he was calling out, rags, rags, clean rags for your old ones. And there was a young man in town who spotted him and decided he would just follow him around and see what he was up to. The ragman approached a porch where a woman was sitting and sobbing so hard that the handkerchief that she was holding in her hands was soaked. The ragman approached her and offered to exchange a nice, clean, bright hanky for the soiled one in her hands. And then he, he gently pulled the hanky from her fingers and he handed her the new, pretty hanky. And then the woman stopped crying and she smiled. But amazingly, when the ragman took her hanky, he also seemed to take on her sadness. And he started crying as he walked. And next he found a man who had a large bandage that was wrapped around his head. And, and you could see that he had a wound because there was still some blood there. The man was just staring, unfocused. And the ragman approached him with a clean new cap, which he showed the man and offered to exchange that for the bandage. The man unwrapped the bandage with the ragman's help. And then the ragman gave him the cap, and the man's eyes brightened, and the wound was gone. But then the ragman wound the bandage around his head, and his head began to bleed. Then the ragman saw a man sleeping on the sidewalk covered in an old army blanket and, and smelly clothes on. He didn't wake up, but the ragman gently put a clean blanket and, and clean clothes over him, and he, and he picked up the old army blanket. And in this story, as it continues, my friends, we come to realize that the ragman is Jesus. He's walking through the streets of the town, taking on himself the sadness and the sickness and the homelessness and exchanging that for new life for everyone he meets. One of the real needs that we are seeing right now here in our church office is for shelter and housing, for those who are finding themselves homeless for the first time during this pandemic, when people are losing jobs and businesses and being evicted. Could we, with Jesus guiding, find ways to provide more shelter and housing for people here in this area because all the other shelters are full. What is our role in loving others as Christ does regarding the issues of grief and pain and homelessness? What is our role as we celebrate the presence of God with us and with all people, all people, so that our hearts and our doors can be open for everyone to know Jesus' love? What is our role? 
Amen.